<laughs> All right, uh, been restricted to my uh, home by Governor Newsom here in California. So uh, for me, that's all right. I was already retired, so it's not like I had to go to work. Um, fortunately, uh, my mortgage is paid, so I've got a roof over my head, kind of no matter what happens. Well, maybe not. Might have armed robbers come and take it from me. But uh, anyway, trying to stay uh, out of this pandemic and stay healthy and live for a little longer. And I hope you guys are uh, doing well and safe and haven't lost your jobs or work temporarily. Um, I am optimistic about it. I think things are going to work out, probably not by Easter, but uh, I think we'll dampen the curve and we'll get this thing pretty much under control. Um, let's see. I am missing my tennis, missing my exercise, so I'm doing a little bit of extra work on my Peloton bike. I should be getting in and using uh, my weights as well, but I have trouble doing that. My uh, weight lifting bench is my number one dust collector. It, it collects dust. That's, I don't think that's what woodworkers mean by dust collection system. All right, what do I have going on in my shop? I recently released um, my pop-up workbench and my saw stallions. Actually, the pop-up workbench uses the saw stallions, but I think the saw stallions are totally usable by themselves uh, and are probably the most missed out opportunity for a lot of woodworkers, particularly beginning workers who don't have a full-scale shop. Um, because trestle style, sturdy uh, saw stallions can be used in so many ways. In fact, is one of the videos I'm working on, and, and I don't think I can come up with 50 different ways, but you remember the old song, uh, 50 Ways to Leave Your Lover? I was trying to think of 50 ways to use your saw horses or your saw stallions. Now, I use saw stallions to distinguish from the plastic store-bought uh, things or from the metal ones. Uh, I'm talking about DIY saw horses that you build in a certain style. Um, fact is, and I'm sure you guys have seen all of these, but here's my uh, here's my pop-up workbench over here, and you can see the feet of the saw stallions, and it's on a little uh, cart with uh, nothing more than a piece of plywood and four big old casters. And so I can move that uh, where it is. I can move it outside into my driveway. I can do pretty much anything I want to do with it. Let me take a look at comments here. So if I'm looking like I'm looking way over somewhere else, uh, that's because I am. So let's see. Jacob uh, Yates. Only have a minute. Well, thank you for joining for a minute, and I hope you're staying safe, too. The Great Smoky Mountain National Park. So we've been hiking. Yeah, I think it's a darn good idea to get out and get some exercise and not just get housebound the whole time. I, I have a little schnauzer, so I get out all the time taking him on a walk. Uh, I just have to stay away from my friends when I see him coming down the street. All right, so what are we working on? We released the uh, pop-up workbench based on the saw stallions. Uh, that workbench is just a top that you can put on top of the saw horses and attach it with match fit dovetail clamps like these. And then it's got all the grooves in it and dog holes and everything you could want uh, in a bench. And it just gives you the ability, even though I've got my samurai carpenter bench here, it gives you the ability to roll it out into the driveway or the carport and have additional working space. Or I can set it up right there next to my workbench and then that creates my workbench into from a five foot workbench into, if I want it to be, a 11 foot workbench. So that's pretty cool. Or I can turn it a rectangular way and then have kind of an L shape. So I really, really, really like it. And uh, I use my sawhorses all the time. So 
Those are available on my website, smallworkshopguide.com. Um, just hit the link there. That will actually take you to Etsy, to my Etsy store, E-T-S-Y. And then you can uh, buy either of them for just under $10, $9.99. And uh, if you're not going to build the entire pop-up workbench with the top, then just get the plans for the saw stallions because it's a different cut list. You experience woodworker and, and you get the plans and you can deal with your own cut list, then go ahead and get the pop-up workbench because that will show you where to place all of the grooves both on the top side and on the bottom side. Um, the other way to get it is to be a uh, tier 2 Patreon. And I did grandfather those of you who have been patrons for a couple of months. Uh, David, you, for instance, hopefully you got the plans and took a look at them. Uh, while I'm at it, let me thank my patrons uh, at, at the uh, All Access tier, which is the $5 a month tier. And this is a way to get the plans, is to be a patron at the $5 a month tier. And I don't care if you feel like the plans are worth $5, then right after you sign up as a patron and download the file, then go ahead and cancel it. That's okay with me. If you uh, look at the plans and you think maybe they're worth a little more, then go ahead and stay a patron at the $5 level for another couple of months whatever you feel the value is. So $10 over on my website, $5 as a patron. Uh, old patrons got grandfathered and should have got the files. Let's see, what else? Um, I'm going to do a video on the saw stallions. Like I say, 50 ways to try to use saw stallions. I don't think I'll get to 50, probably 23 ways or something. But I just think so many people are missing out on the opportunity and the flexibility. They can be an in-feed table for your table saw. They can be an out-feed table. Uh, they can, uh, if you have the match fit dovetail grooves in them, or if you put T-tracks in them, either way, just something on all of the faces, then you can use them as vices. You can hold them large things such as doors. Uh, I mean, they're just, you can use them to cut down sheet goods. Uh, you, your imagination is the only limit if they're really good solid trestle style uh, saw horses and uh, as opposed to little old plastic or folding leg ones uh, from Home Depot. The uh, other thing I'm working on is for those saw stallions I've created a little uh, what I call jaw horse accessory. In other words, you've seen uh, April Wilkerson probably with her Triton jaw horse. It's kind of a foldable set of uh, saw horses, but then it has a jaw on it. Well, with uh, your own saw stallions, there's no reason why you can't just have a real simple jig such as this. Um, and then this goes over the uh, saw horse and is nice and stable because you bring a match fit clamp in on that sawhorse top groove uh, and and then clamp it to your sawhorses and then you can actually put another one on the opposite side and bring it in and clamp it or you can put as I have done here match fit dovetail grooves into the arrangement and I'll have a video on this, the design, the build, and the uses. i got a lot of videos in the works. I never seem to get any done. Speaking of videos in the works, I'm, I've got two build videos for the uh, pop-up workbench and the saw stallions, two separate ones. The, um, those are just the typical, you know, five minutes to seven minutes and so. For the uh, plans, uh, you not only get the plans, but you get a full cut list, and then I have 12 videos that you get access to, which are step-by-step -step tutorial instructional uh, videos for how to build the saw stallions and the top of horse. The saw stallions are built out of three-quarter inch plywood, the, and uh, that's all, two, 
two sheets and you don't even use the two full sheets. And it's designed in a way that when you put the layers of plywood together in a certain way, then you are building your mortises and your tenons that put it together. So there's not a single screw in the whole thing. It's all mortise and tenon. Uh, it's very sturdy. And then it's also got the dovetail groove. So I've got the full scale, step by step, section by section build tutorials. Uh, particularly, I, I guess I would recommend to relatively novice or beginning woodworkers that if you're sharing your garage with your car, uh, then you can have a full scale workbench that just folds, I mean, parks over in the corner when you don't need it and then you roll it out and set it up and then you've got everything that a real woodworker's got uh, without giving up the space for your car. So that's another use of it. And then when you start adding uh, the match fit dovetail clamps to it and things like the uh, jaw horse accessories, then it can get to be a really useful thing. All right, let's see, what else? Um, I actually was going to roll out a set of plans. So the, the current plans are all plywood. Uh, if you're going to build the pop-up workbench, then you need uh, two sheets of three-quarter inch Baltic birch plywood and then two sheets of half-inch Baltic birch plywood. And that's what you use for what I call the light version of the top and of the side panel. And again, it's designed so you only have to have or have access to a table saw and a router. I specifically did not use anything in the design such as a dado stack or anything special, just basically a table saw and a router. The, um, okay, so anyway, those uh, build videos will be out just showing an overview of the build and then the, I've already published the detailed videos. I am, uh, I was going to do plans with two by fours for the saw stallions and I'm still planning on doing that just so people could have an option that'll come out in a couple months and that will be another build where you don't have to cut anything, everything just done with a table saw and a jointer, uh, jointer, <laughs> not a jointer, I'm not assuming you have a jointer a table saw and a router. You have to have a router to do the dovetail grooves. Um, and you can, you know, if you don't have a router of your own, you can borrow one from somebody. Uh, so I'm going to come out with a two by four version just to try to have something less expensive. And then I was going to come out with a hardwood version similar to uh, what I did with my Samurai workbench uh, saw stallions. That's a set of sawhorses I built in order to build some skills and uh, get some practice and, and some experience before I attacked my workbench. And that was a very educational build. But those samurai carpenter uh, saw stallions, sawhorses, are designed to, to look good aesthetically. They got some little rounding on them and some little uh, different design in order to make them attractive looking. Well, what I've decided was with sawhorses, it's, it's really more function over form. In, in other words, they should be functional. And so I was going to build a hardwood version of my pop-up workbench. And then I decided, you know what, I already have a hardwood version. Why don't I figure out how to retrofit it or how to rework it so that it has the features that I want. So that's what I'm working on. <coughs> Actually, I'm all done with it. It's just I it's outside. Can't show it to you because I it's got some uh finish on it and I didn't want to smell the finish while I was being online here with you. So, um doesn't look like we got anybody else joining yet. And I don't expect many people to join my little live sessions because you know when you got as few subscribers as I have even though it's growing you, how many people are, are going to be there at exactly the right time 
to see it. So most people view this later. Of course, then they miss out on all the comments. Uh, anything else I'm working on? Well, I've done a set of plans for some uh, kitchen pull-out cabinets. In other words, one of the best things that I ever did in my woodworking was to do something for my wife in that we only had one set of ca cabinets in the kitchen that had pull-out shelves. And so I took all the cabinets that I could, all the lower cabinets, and I did pull-out shelves for all of them. And uh, that kind of allowed me to go ahead and buy some tools and do some things because she was happy that my woodworking was actually producing something for her. So my brother asked for a set of pull-out shelves, a pair of them. And so I did that as long as I had recently learned and wanted to keep polishing off my skills for SketchUp rather than just build him some, which I could have done in an afternoon, you know, just with current knowledge, I decided to go ahead and do a set of plans. So I have a full sale set of plans that I'm going to put up on my website. I'm probably not even going to charge for them. And they have perfect project for a beginning woodworker. Not only will you learn some things, but in addition, you will make your wife happy, or if you're the gal working in the workshop, then you'll make your husband happy. Or if you're both of the same sex, then you'll make your partner happy. I don't care. Equal opportunity employer here. So anyway, uh, I've got that in the works. What else? Um, I, oh, I've, uh, I'm going to do a 2020 workshop tour. Because I happened to watch my latest workshop tour recently, which was early 2019, and, and wow, things changed in my workshop. So uh, workshop tours are always some of the most popular uh, YouTube things you can publish. And so I'm going to do a full-scale updated one, talking this time more about the equipment that I have and reviewing it, as well as talking about my wood storage, as well as reviewing all of the match fit dovetail jigs that I have uh, either copied from somebody else or developed on my own. A little bit of controversy. I have one fellow that uh, every time I post a video that has any match fit dovetail stuff in it, he kind of doesn't like it. He's a T-track man. Uh, but I have discovered that I can take uh, devices, can I add that? I can take devices like these that are designed for T-Tracks and I can do one of two things. I can either do some additional deeper and flatter grooves right in my workbench, but I found that a little difficult to do, to, to put a groove with a T-slot inside of a groove because if you don't get it lined up just right, or if your router has a mind of its own, then it can uh, come out ugly. So the easiest thing really, which you can't screw up, is to just take an angle grinder and just make these little items here. I guess if I'm going to, where is it? Make these items a little bit more narrow, if that's proper English. I don't think you can say narrower, I think you have to say more narrow. But anyway, so all of these little devices here, uh, I'm getting ready to grind some more. I've already ground a bunch of different jigs, so I can then just insert those into my match fit dovetail grooves and uh, have the best of both worlds. I can have my dovetail grooves in order to use all of my match fit clamps that I have, and I have about 12 now or I can use all of the jigs that have been designed for T-Tracks just by making a quick modification to them. So if you got an investment in different uh, clamps and T-Track uh, items, uh, but you want to do the workbench, uh, you can decide to convert some of those extra T-Track items that you have, if you don't have T-Tracks, all sorts of jigs of your own. Uh, anyway, and you can always just use the little uh, T-bolts, you know, they're designed for toilets or whatever, and make those a little bit more narrow, and then find the right size uh, wing nut that goes onto those. You don't have to build something fancy, and so, and you don't have to always use the full-scale match pit clamps because these puppies are $45 for a pair. Uh, what I decided to do was just buy a pair a month for a number of months, and so, 
been about six, six or eight months for me now, so I've got a good set of them. In addition to go along with some of the things that I have designed for T-Tracks. Well, that's what I'm working on. I want to thank my patrons, a uh, fellow named Rick, a fellow named C.E. Kestner, Andrew Coots, David, if you're still there, uh, Kane Rod Steele, and Powell Gottlieb. There's a lot of expense to doing these videos, and so far my Patreon gives me about $17 a month. I mean, I'm small, small, small potatoes to a lot of these guys. They say, let me thank my patrons, and then there's screen rolls and rolls and rolls and rolls of all their patrons. So anyway, the good news is I'm about able to cover the, my monthly cost of my Premier Pro subscription. And, of course, with some of the Amazon affiliate sales and some of the uh, YouTube, you know, 25 cents a month uh, AdSense revenue uh, and the sale of my plans, I I'm starting to approach breaking even. So I really appreciate the uh, Patreon support. Uh, even if I didn't break even, I'd probably keep doing this. Uh, well... Interesting world we live in. I'll be back with some uh, videos. That's my shop update. I hope all of you have a, a good day. Let's see. And uh, stay safe out there in the public. Keep your social distancing. And stay safe in your workshop. <coughs> When I say stay safe in your workshop, I really mean it because this is the last time that you would possibly want to be paying an emergency visit to the emergency room and getting down there and exposing yourself to that whole medical staff who's been exposed to, to the virus. So uh, stay home, stay safe, and don't, don't force yourself into a trip to the hospital. You guys have a nice week. And uh, we'll all emerge out of this at the end somewhere, and life is good. Small Workshop Guy, signing off. <laughs>